Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to learn how to build some simple graphs and charts in React.js. We're going to start with a simple line chart. We're also going to do an area chart, a few bar charts, and finally a scatter plot. I'm going to use some mock data to create the graphs, but you can build them in the same way no matter what data you have in your application. So here's the code we have for the whole thing. Uh, it's just around 115 lines of code. We're going to build it from scratch up so that it's easier for you to understand. So with that being said, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the uh, structure, the directory structure I have. So we have the public directory. We have source where we just have an app.js and index.js. And we have the corresponding CSS files. We're going to write all our code in app.js so that you don't need to jump around uh, to see how things are working uh, correctly. Uh, so yeah, let's start with just a bare bone React app uh, so that uh, we can get started. So the first thing we're going to do is import the CSS file. Currently, the CSS file has just some basic background color and stuff uh, just to make things look pretty. Uh, we're going to have our class, which is going to be, uh, in this case, we're just going to do a function, which is going to be the app function. And then just let's return hello world. And then let's export it. Right. Uh, there you go. And let's see what we have. There you go. You can see we have a hello world over here uh, that shows that we are starting from scratch. So now let's actually go ahead and import the packages and libraries that we need to uh, see the charts. So we need area. So everything we do is going to come from a React package called recharts. Mm, so the classes we need or the components we need are going to be area area chart, we need bar, we need bar chart, we need line chart, line, we need the x-axis and the y-axis, we need the grid itself, I believe that's gonna be, there we go, we got the grid, we got the tooltip, the legend, uh, the scatter and the scatter chart. We're going to see how to use each of these components as we go along. The next thing we need is some mock data. So we can just do data equals. It's going to be an array. And in this array, every uh, element is going to be each of your data point. So we're going to use some mock financial data. So let's say we have every month. How much do we have in our savings account? And how much do we have in our checkings account? That's gonna be our mock data. So we have January, we're gonna copy this. We're gonna have it for a few months. Here we go, let's save it. And then let's say, let's add in the months. So we have February, where let's say we have 6,000 and 8,000. We have March where let's say we have around 2,000 and 200. So let's change it to 800 so that we can see the different scales. And then we have April where we're gonna have uh, 2,000. And then let's say we have around 1,000. Actually, let's change it to around 3,000. All right, so we have April, and then let's do two more months. We can do May, which is going to be uh, 6,000 and 1,500. And finally, we have June, where we're going to have uh, 8,000 and 1,200. All right, so that's our mock data done. Uh, so still, you only see the hello world over here. So now that we have the mock data, let's actually start building uh, the graph. So the first thing, we're going to get rid of this. We're going to put the return statement. We're going to have our div 
This is going to be our end closing div. Let's give it a class name of app. Let's give it some style. Uh, these are going to be pretty basic styles, so we're going to make it a flex box. We're going to orient everything in a column. So we're going to have flex direction and set it to column. We're going to align everything to the center. There you go. It should align everything to the center. We're going to give it a background color to make it look prettier. And then finally, we're going to just give an arbitrary uh, height so that uh, we can see the whole page. All right, so that's what we have over here. And then within the div, let's have our first element, which is going to be just called simple line chart. And let's see if everything is aligned properly. Uh, this is going to be a colon. There you go. All right, so we can see a simple line chart here. So now below this, let us actually have our line chart. So the first component you need is the line chart. You give it a width, I'll give it 1000. You give it a height, let's say we give 300. And then you give the data, which in our case is called data. That's our line chart component. Within that, so line chart is your parent component, and within that we're going to have all the customizations uh, of the line chart. So the first thing is you want to give it the grid. You can just import it. There you go, that's our grid. You give it the x-axis, and then you say that within your data, which, uh, uh, which field is your x-axis? In our case, it's the month field, right? So let's just look at our data. So over here, every data point has three attributes, month, savings, and checkings. Month is gonna be our x-axis. That's why we put the data key as month. We have the y-axis, and then we're gonna give a tooltip, because we want a tooltip. We also want a legend for the graph, so we're gonna have the legend. Uh, there you go. And now we need the two lines, right? Because you need one line for the savings and one line for the checkings. So the way we do that is very straightforward. We give it a line. We give it a few attributes, like a type. We're gonna give it monotone. We're gonna give the data key once again. And let's say the first one we want is our checkings. And then we just give it a color. Let's give it green. This is gonna be the first one, right? So let's see what we have. And there you go, we have our uh, checkings. Let's do our savings too, which is gonna be very similar. Once again, you have the line, you give it a type, you give it a data key, uh, there you go. Uh, you give it another stroke, uh, let's say we do it red, and then you just close it, all right? So now, let's see, okay, there you go. So we have a simple line chart with our data, uh, you have your y-axis and we have your uh, x-axis. You have a legend that tells you which colored line is which one. So we can see the red line is savings and the green line is checkings. And you have a tooltip where every time you hover on a data point, you get the values both for both of the lines, right? So yeah, that's a pretty simple graph and it barely took us like five lines of code to write that. And uh, right now we have static data, but of course you can build it for dynamic data so that whenever your page loads, you fetch the data and then render the charts. So these can uh, evolve over time. So let's move on to the next one. The next one we're going to do is going to be called the simple area chart. We're going to use the same data so that you can just look at the difference uh, with the same data. Once again, you have the area chart where you give it a width. And we're going to give 1000. You give it a height. We're going to give 300. And then you give it the data once again. Right? There's the data. And then within that, you give all your uh, attributes. Uh, sorry, all your child components. So we're going to have the grid. There you go. Uh, once again, you give it the x axis. And you give it a data key which once again in our case is going to be month 
you give it a y-axis you give it a tooltip there you go and you give it a legend so very similar to the last one and then instead of lines we need area right we need area it's an it's an area chart so you have your area and then you give it very very similar attributes you give it a type which is gonna be let's say a monotone uh, we have our data key once again which let's say it's going to be checkings stroke that's going to be the color of your line in our clay case we're going to do blue and fill which is going to be the color of your area underneath the line which we're going to give blue to there you go so we have one let's copy it because we need our we need our other line uh, let's do one for savings and let's give them green all right so now let's see what we have there you go we have our line chart and now we have our area chart the uh, trajectory is similar because it's the same data so it's exact same not only similar but the only difference this is a line chart and this is an area chart so the area underneath the line is shaded uh, so you yeah, know we have two charts going let's move on to the next one which is going to be our bar chart so we're going to have a simple bar chart very similar we have our bar chart parent component where we give a width where we give a height uh, oh, there you go you give a height and then you give it the data so very very similar no matter uh, which chart you uh, draw uh, so at this point I'm gonna just copy paste a few things we have the grid we need we have the x-axis we have the y-axis we have the tooltip we have the legend all the things we still need so I'll copy paste them over here there you go and the only thing that changes is instead of area we're gonna have bar we're gonna give it a data key once again savings we're going to give it fill which is going to be the color of the bar i'll just copy paste uh, the css code mm -hmm. you're going to give it the fill over here there you go and we're going to have another bar for checkings right and then we need another color so let's just get the color over here and then put it here all right that's all you need for a bar chart and you can see we have a bar chart over here with tooltip legend once again different colored bars for the two different kinds of data uh, and the trends are the same uh, it's just a different way to show the same data uh, we have two different bars for the different data and now we're gonna build another bar chart where each month we'll have one bar and within the bar we're gonna have different proportions for checkings and savings uh, that's called a, a stacked bar chart so let's do that next so we're gonna have our stacked bar charts uh, once again it's gonna be very very similar where we ju just have uh, our uh, let's just see over here there you go so very very similar we have our bar chart so I'm just gonna copy paste this whole thing that it's like almost exact same the only difference is gonna be to the bar you're gonna give something called a stack ID and it should be the same ID for both so that they're stacked on top of each other and let's see what's different so we have our fill let's do it red and blue uh, your stack it's gonna be stack ID and there you go so instead of having separate bars we have only one bar for each of the month and within the bar we have uh, different colors if you want to flip them around you can do that too so now you're checking things at the bottom savings at the top and if you wanted to have the other way around you have your savings and then the uh, uh, checking so yeah that's your stack bar chart and the last thing we're gonna build is the scatter plot so we're gonna have a simple scatter plot 
Uh, so the parent thing is gonna be the parent component is gonna be scatter char. You give it a width. There you go. You give it a height. It's gonna be 300. And then within that, the first thing you give is the grid. There you go. You give an X axis. Uh, you give the type of the X axis. Our type is gonna be a category because our X axis uh, is the month and month is a category. It's not like a continuous uh, a variable. So you give it a type and you call it category. You give it the data key as usual, which in our case is going to be month. And then we can give it a name to label it. So let's give it month. The next thing is the y-axis. So for the y-axis, the type is going to be a number because our checking and saving data are numbers. We're going to give it data key of savings because we're only displaying one in the scatter plot. Then you give it a name called savings and you can give it a unit, which is going to be our dollar. There we go. So you have the X axis and the Y axis. We want the tooltip. There you go. And finally, we have our scatter. And the scatter is going to take in the data, which is going to be our data. And it's going to take in a color, which let's just give it red. And there you go. That should be your scatter plot. Let's see what did we break. Uh, so we have the scatter chart. We're giving it the data. We're giving it the color. And let's see. What are we missing over here? Undefined. So we have it in a div. Hmm. Mm. All right. Let us switch to, okay, let's go over it once again. So we have our scatter chart. We're giving it a width and a height. We have our grid. We have an X axis, which is a category type. We're giving it month and we're giving it uh, the name. We have our Y axis, which is a number. We're choosing the savings and then we have unit. Uh, that works. And then we have the tooltip. And finally, we have scatter, which is going to be our data. Oh, there you go. We have no data. So data is going to be data. There you go. That should fix it. And there you go. So this is just a simple scatter plot with uh, only our savings uh, data. All right. So uh, that's how you build simple charts and graphs in React.js. Uh, to sum up, we used a package called recharts. And uh, it's pretty simple. Everything is self-explanatory here. Uh, if you have more questions, you can always put it in the comments. I'll link the code in the description too. But um, yeah, with very few lines of code, you can draw line charts, area charts, bar chart, stack bar chart, and scatter plot. Right now I have it with static data, but you can build the same thing in your application with dynamic data, with no no code change pretty much so hopefully that was helpful if you have any questions just leave them in the comments and i'll get back to you with that being said have a good rest of the day i will catch you guys in the next one bye, -bye.